Astros. Make sure to catch all the action on the diamond Saturday afternoon starting at 1230 on ESPN Las Vegas. 1100 AM and 100.9 FM. Jim Basquale. Takes his block. Pichuski with it for Akoski. He scores! The Avalanche came out like they were shot out of a cannon or maybe an F-22. Colorado wins game one in overtime. So, uh, I mean, this is great. This is a dream, dream for a kid. Um, that's overtime for you. You never know what's, what's going to happen. Yeah, two full days off, by the way, on the heels of Andre Burakovsky's game a winner in the opener of the Stanley Cup final. Avs taking the Lightning 4-3. to three. They outshot him 38-23. They won all three matchups this season against Tampa Bay. All decided by one goal. The Lightning, of course, seeking to become the first team to win three straight Stanley Cup titles since the Islanders of the early 80s with Ray Ferraro and Emily Kaplan, John Puchagras, a look ahead at Game 2 and beyond. We thought there might be rust from the Avalanche, Ray, in Game 1 after that big time off, after wrapping up the Western Conference Final, but they dominate the first 10 minutes, lead to nothing, no scoring chances allowed, and really a lot of turnovers from the Lightning. Uh, I, I found the Lightning quite surprisingly to be back on their heels most of that first 10 minutes. I thought their experience would help them start better, but like their first game against the Rangers, they turned the puck all over the place, in particular in the neutral zone. So now Colorado, the faster, more aggressive team, is playing in a half-ice game. And when they got in on the forecheck, Colorado just shut the options down, breaking out of the zone. That's McCarr with the deep pinch off the forecheck. Nachuskin, who was, I thought, the best forward in game one for Colorado, scores in the first period. I, I will say this about Tampa, though. In, in their three previous series, they've lost game one. Mm -hmm. No team really adjusts as well or as quickly under John Cooper as, as the Lightning do. I suspect they'll play a much better game in game two. They better, for sure. You know, injury has been a storyline in this series, Emily Kaplan. And let's talk about Nazem Kadri first. Uh, we know thumb surgery. How close is he to returning? What's the latest? So when you have thumb surgery, the big thing is gripping the stick. And we had some significant developments in the last two days because Kadri was on the ice and he was holding a stick and he was stick handling. That's obviously huge and he was skating pretty well. Today when we saw him, though, he really wasn't gripping the stick with two hands all that often. Sometimes he just had one. At the end of practice, I saw him take a shot. I think shot is probably a generous word for it. It was more of a love tap into the net. I'm told that he's still working very hard to get in this series. He'd still like to get in this series, but will likely only get in this series if it goes long. Yeah, so while the Avs try to get back some of their walking wounded, keep in mind the Andre Vasilevsky factor leading all goalies in playoff save percentage and goals against won the Con Smythe just last year. Four goals allowed on 38 shots in game one, but he gets better. He's like fine wine, right, as the series goes along. College World Series, the luck of the Irish continued. Carter Potts drives this to right center, and God! Yeah. Carter Putz goes yard. John Michael Bertrand and two relievers held the Longhorns offense in check. 7-3 Notre Dame over Texas in his first College World Series game in 20 years. The Irish carry the momentum of eliminating number one overall seed Tennessee in the Super Regionals against the program, making its 38th appearance in Omaha. Bring a relief pitcher in in a 3-2 count. This ball, first pitch swinging. Right field. Jackson Nicholas adds four. And boy, the pitching decisions have backfired on Schlossnagel twice now, leaving in Menifee. And Nicholas joins the party with a granny. Yeah, Jackson Nicholas, the grand slam. Oklahoma over Texas A&M 13-8. Sooners scored seven runs with two outs in the second to lead 8 to nothing in what became the highest-scoring College World Series game since 2008. So it will be Texas A&M and Texas in an elimination game in Omaha. This is Sports Center All Night on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. The major's best team put a dozen runs on the board and did it on the road. 1-0. High drive, right field, there it goes, see ya, a grand slam for Rizzo, and the Yankees lead 10-1. to 1. Michael K, yes, network Anthony Rizzo capped the Yankees' eight-run fifth, the granny Yankees extend their winning streak to eight. 
12-3 over the Blue Jays. They've won 15 of their last 16. 48 and 16. That's gaudy. Best start since 1998. They opened an 11-game lead over Toronto in the East. John Carlos Stanton, DJ LeMayu, Joey Gallo also in yard. Yankees lead the majors with 105 long balls. One ball, one strike. Here it is. Swing a chopper toward third. That's a fair ball, and that's going to sneak into the corner and left. Jackie scores. Dahlbeck behind him. Raffi holds it first. It's a two-run hit, and the Red Sox have broken it open. They lead 6-1. to one. That's 93.7 FM WEI. Rafael Devers and Trevor Story each drove in a pair. Michael Walker pitched into the six against his former team, Boston, shut down a St. Louis rally in the ninth. Red Sox beat the Cardinals 6-5. Tune in for an AL battle today. Astros play host of the White. Sox. It's presented by Progressive Insurance. Coverage begins at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. A bunch of two out, a two strike hits and another deep blast to right. This one will go. Kyle Tucker hits one off the face of the second deck in right field. 13 to 3. KBME 790 AM. That was the third of three home runs and a 10-run six, including Michael Brantley's Grand Slam Astros. 13-3 past the White Sox. The 0-1. Swing and a high fly ball. Straight away set a pretty deep. Dela Cruz back. It's going to go. Home run. Francisco Lindor. He will treasure that home run forever. He hit it to straight away center field. Into the batter's eye to the left of the home run apple. And with his mom in New York, Watching him play live here for the very first time. The door hits a three-run homer to give the Mets a three-to-nothing first-inning lead. Howie Rose said it all on WCVS. Francisco Lindor went yard with his ailing mom's first visit at City Field. Pete Alonso, a grand slam and a seven-run six. Mets over the Marlins, 10-4. They're 20 games above 500 for the first time since 2015. Extend their division lead to five and a half. Phillies, though, sweep a pair from the Nats. 5-3 in the opener and in the nightcap. They take it 8-7, to seven, running Washington's losing streak to seven despite three home runs in the twin bill from Josh Bell. Philadelphia's won 14 of 16. Coming up, we look back at the Warriors' run of titles focused on Steph. That's next. This is ESPN Radio. Greeny with Mike Greenberg. What I struck me was the Warrior players were as happy for Steph as he was for himself. Greeny, weekday mornings at 10 Eastern on ESPN Radio and on ESPN+. Plus. Okay, ladies, we all know one of the greatest feelings in the world when a friend says, Girl, those pants look amazing on you. And I say, thanks. They're Skechers Go Walk Wear Pants. And why do I always get compliments on these casual, athletic, stretchy pants? They're made with comfortable Go Flex fabric that has compression and hold. They have four pockets. Plus, they're machine washable and come in extended sizes. That's the Skechers Go Walk Wear line of pants. Find yours at Skechers.com, a Skechers store, and find retailers everywhere.